I imagine lots of you looked at the title and were somewhat confused, you know? Having a look at something that says, ooh, best assault rifle, tends to come across as clickbait. But today I'm going to provide you guys an insight into the RPK assault rifle, which was recently added in the Battlefield Hardline Robbery DLC and the patch that came with it. Now the RPK, in my opinion, is probably the best assault rifle hands down I have ever used in Battlefield Hardline, and today we're going to have a look at exactly why that is. Now it seems only fitting that we start off with the statistic side of things, and that tends to be something that a lot of people look at when valuing up what weapons they want to use. So, this has a rate of fire of 600 RPM and a bullet muzzle velocity of 580 meters a second, with a max distance of 2,900 meters. Now this is where things get special. This gun has a maximum damage of 36 and a minimum of 24, so certainly putting it up there on the spectrum in terms of bullet damage and making it a very effective heavy hitter when it comes to close range, medium range, and even some long range engagement. Engagements. A minimum of 24 damage considering the drop off is actually pretty damn good to have. It has a reload time of 2.2 seconds with bullets left in the magazine and a reload time of 3 seconds without any left in the magazine with a grand total of an incredible 51 bullets in a mag. Now this is the first assault rifle I have ever seen to provide such a ridiculous level of ammunition in a single magazine which is why in a very infantry centric game like Hardline we got lots of people running around and it's very likely you're going to hit on double, triple, and even quadruple engagements, that 51 magazine is absolutely vital. It has an upward recoil of 0.7, a leftward recoil of 0.18, and a rightward recoil of 0.4. It has a recoil decrease of 18 and a first shot multiplier of 2.7. Now I imagine a lot of you have looked at those statistics and thought, yes, this gun packs a punch, it has the ammunition to do so as well, but the recoil compensation is going to make things very tricky when it comes to accuracy. Now, statistically speaking, when I looked at that, I thought, yep, yeah, that's going to be the case. But when I first equipped the weapon, I was quite surprised. Now, I haven't played Hardline up until, say, a week before this DLC launch, so my recoil compensation is all over the place. I'm completely inaccurate with nearly any gun that I use right now. Even the M416, which isn't even that bad in terms of recoil, I had trouble controlling. I was missing bullets left, right, and center. But when I equipped the RPK, even though statistically speaking, Speaking, it has more recoil, significantly more recoil than the M416, it's actually a lot easier to control and easier to manage, and I found it a breeze getting accurate shots even at pretty medium to long range distances, and I suppose you have to kind of accredit the slow rate of fire of 600 RPM for that. But surprisingly enough, I think you can kind of dismiss the recoil statistic here because this is probably one of the most controllable weapons I've used in Battlefield Hardline hands down. Imagine the M16A3 pre-patch where its recoil was practically minimal to non-existent. That's what the RPK feels like. Certainly as distance increases, you may notice it a bit more, but ultimately speaking, it's very simple to compensate for and I haven't had any problems whatsoever. Bullet spread wise, the gun is in and around the areas of an average assault rifle with the occasional change here and there. It has a standing spread of 0.25, a moving spread of 1, and the spread increases 0.18 per shot, which is in and around the same as the more powerful assault rifles with the higher damage models, but it does have the same decrease time, which I feel is really important. Now, I wouldn't really recommend hip firing the RPK, it just it just doesn't have the feeling to it to accommodate a hip fire shot. I've noticed that if you're crouching or prone, it's very much possible to do so, but if you're standing, you certainly want to ADS before you try and take on a target anywhere around to close to medium range. It's unfortunate, but at the same time, the ADS time isn't that slow, so it's something that you can accommodate in your game quite easily. All I'm saying is don't hope to get lots of hip fire shots, it just won't happen. So let's talk about the gun as a whole and where exactly it fits into Battlefield Hardline in terms of strengths and weaknesses and where I found it most effective to use. Now, this gun is an absolute powerhouse, there is no doubt about that. It has a maximum 36 damage with a 51 bullet capacity. Now, I know that doesn't sound incredible when you just hear it off the bat, but when you use the weapon itself, it's so abundant as to how ridiculously overpowered this weapon can be sometimes. So imagine you're sitting there in a close range to medium range situation with four to three enemy players roughly within about five meters of each other. So they're standing relatively compactly together 
together. You have a whole 51 bullets with a maximum damage of 36 to cut all of them down. And believe me when I tell you, it is actually possible to take down all four of those players before any of them even get a shot off at you. Now, the 600 RPM is a bit of a downfall, but it actually makes the gun more controllable, therefore allowing you to hit your targets much more consistently, and ultimately getting way more kills than you could even imagine. The 51 bullets is just ridiculous. Quad kills are possible, pentakills, even if you're lucky, pentakills would be possible, the occasional headshot here and there, and it's, it's just incredible how many people you can drop in a single magazine without having to reload. Now, one thing that was a quite nice surprise, so to speak, is that I thought this gun would only really work at close range, but at medium range, it's very much effective, and at long range, if you can do the occasional burst fire here and there, it's actually pretty decent too. Now, at the longer ranges where you're missing more shots, because again, of that 51 bullet capacity, it really doesn't matter because you have the availability to adjust your shots in between and you haven't got to be too concerned with reloading. Now, when I was facing snipers in one-to-one -one situations, it made my life a lot easier because I could continue to suppress them without having to reload the mag and give them the opportunity to take me down. The gun really comes into its own in infantry-centric gameplay, and surprisingly in hotwire mode as well. Now obviously you have the magazine, you have the damage, you're very much able to take on players from numerous varieties such as DMR snipers to shotguns and SMGs. Quite frankly, the RPK is probably the most versatile weapon I've used in a very, very long time. But it also comes into its own in the vehicular-based gameplay. Now what you have to understand is Hardline is a game which assault rifles and LMGs can very much impact on vehicular-based gameplay too. Now in hotwire mode, whilst cruising around on some of the new maps, I found it really helpful to have that 51 mag. The 51 mag basically let me decimate entire vehicles without even giving them the chance to fire a single bullet off. 51 bullets is definitely enough bullets to take on four people in the vehicle, and it's certainly enough to put enough bullets in into a vehicle to damage it to a level where it's not moving as fast as it previously would. Now I'd really recommend using a good squad up pair, getting into a helicopter, getting somebody with an RPK on the side of the chopper and just raining down fire on games like Hotwire. It would just completely dominate the map and you will encounter no problems whatsoever. The only thing I would look out for though is of course being assault, you don't have the ammunition packs to throw down and you're going to have to keep a buddy handy if you want to keep refilling, keep flying and just keep owning the field. So guys, that's it today for my RPK review. I hope you are as convinced as I am that this is the best assault rifle in the game. As always lads, thank you for watching and if you look down in the description below, I have a channel link which is to my second channel that I'd love for you to check out if you're interested in general games such as FIFA and Rocket League and non-FPS content, which is what I'm going to be posting there. As always, like I mentioned, thank you for watching. I'll be back again soon with some more Hardline DLC videos and plenty of other videos such as Squad and Battlefield 4 in the not-too-distant future. It's been me, the Tactical Brit, and I hope you enjoyed this video.